Um, <laughs> to follow up on on Elliot's comments about goals for today, um, to to talk about the some of the the learnings from the pre pre activities, the pre work that came out of um, leading up to the workshop, and then we're gonna we're gonna get all the rest of you working hard. Um, so uh, um, the goals for today, um, ultimately impact. And, and there's no question that, that that really is the key word here. Um, paths for getting there, very specifically, we, 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 want, we hope that this workshop will increase the mutual understanding of what engineering societies are and do and can do, um, and what Wow. Else is happening in engineering education today. What what colleges of engineering education and programs in engineering edu of education are doing um, to understand better. If we want to say we want to make change, let's let's understand who's doing what and where are Needed. the opportunities and use that. We hope to then catalyze a lot of discussions about where are the change opportunities as part of that. Um, sharing information, but most importantly, ideas and insights um, between and among the engineering societies because building a larger collaboration, larger partnerships to say um, together we can tackle bigger problems and we can think about systemically changing. Um, and so clearly a focus on collaboration and so we hope lots and lots of conversations among all of you. Um, there will, we, we hope there will be outcomes um, and follow-up activities from this, and I will just give you a heads up now at the end of the workshop, and we will get these cards out early enough so that you can be thinking about this as we go along. But but one of the things we're going to ask everybody who's participating to do is you're going to have um, two cards. One is a postcard. One will be something you get to keep to write down your action items, um, an action item that's saying, you know what, because of what I have done here, what I have, the ideas I've gained here, um, Within three weeks, I'm going to take the first step to doing something to start affecting change. And then six months, we're not going to try to track you down in three weeks. Um, the three weeks is to make sure that too much time doesn't go by, that some of the energy, the, the inspiration that you get here, you actually have a next step that can happen quickly. Because once you've done that, then saying, oh, yeah, and over the next six months, I'm going to get this bigger step done. But you, you will get a reminder card. The postcard is, will be a reminder that you will receive in six months. And so we're, we're looking not only to have a great workshop, but also to have outcomes um, spearheaded by all of you. Um, the other heads up is that there will be an evaluation of the workshop, and this is really a key part of the the process. Um, so you will be contacted by Karen Peterman by email to complete a brief survey following the workshop, and so we, we also hope that you will participate in that. Okay, So those are things that are off after this is over. Um, so this project, um, you heard from Elliot that NSF is understanding um, how engineering societies fit into this, this ecosystem. Um, and, and in looking at your chart, I finally concluded that I think maybe the reason the blue oval was the biggest one is because it had the most words in it. Although if you want to interpret it to say a reflection of this is really important. And so you, we, we can put both meanings on that, that very large blue oval. Um, and and there, there really is an opportunity here to do good things. Um, so we're hoping to accomplish two goals. First, help increase the understanding of the extent and nature. You know, what's the state now? What is the extent and nature of society's past and current efforts to improve undergraduate engineering education? But with that as a, as a foundation, then to provide an opportunity for societies to share information about current and planned efforts, to learn about trends and needs in undergraduate education, to explore ideas on how societies can play a more effective role and a role with higher impact, and to consider how collaboration and cooperation and to be a vehicle for helping to facilitate that. So the project has two phases. Um, Proctor referred to this. The first phase was the background and information gathering, um, comprised of a literature surf, search, <clears throat> analysis of society's websites, um, surveys and interviews 
on activities to, to do this catalog of what's happening now. And I want to thank all of you who participated in completing those surveys and participating in the interviews. And so this workshop is the kickoff of the second phase. Um, we will, following this, also have regional sessions. Um, for additional, how do we build on what happened here? Um, just a, a note on who is here. Um, obviously, a lot of representatives, volunteers and staff from engineering societies, both discipline-focused societies, so ASME, ASCE, so discipline society people. Ham, people, you think you're in a discipline, okay. Um, and also affinity societies, um, built not so much around a discipline, but around um, some identity, a portion of identity. So SWE and, and, and NACME, so representatives from those, okay. And then we obviously have other people here, and we have some people who do both. Um, there, are, um, there are academics here, um, members of the prod program committee, um, and representatives from some industry as well. One of the most obvious, and I'm going to reiterate this, one of the most obvious points of connection between societies, especially in particular the discipline societies, and curricula and colleges of engineering is through accreditation. Um, it is an important role. Um, and in a parallel undertaking, NAE, in fact, um, held a workshop last year <clears throat> focused on the new ABET criteria. Um, proceedings of that workshop were available on the National Academy's press website. Um, for this, for the purposes of this workshop, we're going to take ABET for granted. Um, there's lots can be said about it, and we can all go off and talk about it for, for months. Um, but ABET is, is a well-known mechanism of engagement. And so our goal really is to look beyond ABET. And I just I, I urge you to think we're not trying to say how do we – this. There have been work to say, how can we work better with ABIT? Um, what else can we be doing? So to set the stage, um, some highlights from, there we go, the literature review. Um, and, and again, um, there, there's more detail about this that will be forthcoming, but, but just a high level summary of where are we now. Um, so. There's limited formal documentation of the influence of engineering societies in engineering education. Um, there are a few documented examples of very specific influence. Um, ASCEs, the American Society of Civil Engineers Body of Knowledge Project um, is, is certainly an outstanding example of this. Um, ABET in, in the literature is clearly cited as an important mechanism. Um, the literature also reflects that there are, there are some coverage, including student chapters, um, the role of societies in promoting diversity, um, informal education activities such as community service projects. Um, and the literature review will be available next month on the project website. From the web analysis, and this was an analysis of 124 websites associated with engineering um, organizations and societies. Um, almost all of the engineering organizations have some form of direct engagement with students. Engagement with students isn't necessarily engagement with engineering education, but engagement with students um, mainly through student membership and student chapters. 25% um, roughly offer some form of financial assistance, travel grants to, to, to meetings, um, other kinds of student support, some scholarship support. More than three quarters of the societies have some form of indirect engagement through technical publications, standards, um, educational research articles, and briefs. And so some of the things that I, I, I would characterize perhaps as the bread and butter of, of a lot of the professional societies. There's little explicit evidence, though, on the society web pages of how these activities directly impact student retention in, in engineering or the effectiveness of the society's engagement. So if we ask the question, what is, how is this contributing to the formation of engineers, um, not documented via, via what is posted on the society's websites. And again, there will be a full analysis, and it will be posted within the next month on the project website. The survey and the interviews, um, a lot of information 
Um, and again, thank you for participating. Um, you have a summary of this in the background information that you received when you registered for the workshop. Um, and I, I believe, so the, the, the survey and the interviews were conducted by Inverness Research, um, working with the, the, this project. And I believe that Jennifer Helms from Inverness is on the phone. Jennifer, you're there. Carl's nodding. So I, I think Jennifer's there. Sure, I Hi. Yes, I'm here. Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, and so I'm, I'm going to give a quick summary. We're going to pause. Um, we're not going to solve any of these problems in this session. This is the kickoff session. This is the stage setting. But if you have questions of clarification, Jen's here to help um, make sure that if, you know, as you move forward, you do feel you understand what came out of this survey and interview stage of the project. So. There are 58 responses out of 121 societies con contacted, and there were 30 follow-up interviews conducted. Um, overall, engineering or engineering-related societies are clearly engaged in a range of education activities that target a wide range of audiences. And so if we look at goals and audiences and kinds of activities, the space is covered across these. Um, nearly every category of goal is represented in the work of the societies in the study example. Um, for example, leadership development, increasing diversity, student retention. These are goals and there, there are not by any, not by each society, but across this wide range. Um, somebody is working towards almost any goal you could imagine. The same is true for types of activities, student chapters, faculty development, certifications, things like that. And also across audiences, um, our focus is undergraduate students, but also industry, government agencies, um, pre-university. Audiences are widely covered through the activities across the societies. All of the societies surveyed were primarily concerned with the professional development and the continuing education of their members. Okay. Vast majority of societies are focused on creating greater awareness of, making the case for the importance of engineering or a particular discipline within engineering. But most of the efforts at dissemination are aimed at their own membership. So we want people to know about this. Who are we talking to? Okay. Societies rate evaluation and assessment of their educational activities is important. Um, but not a lot of resources are dedicated to this undertaking. I was just in a side note, um, you know, my, my most recent work with IEEE has actually not been with the IEEE proper. I just finished a term as uh, five years as president of the IEEE Foundation, which is the philanthropic arm of the IEEE. And we've spent the past five years trying to understand how good can we get at this. And when you talk about philanthropy and fundraising, the question is, you need a story, you need to identify people who will resonate with that story. You use that story to encourage philanthropic support. The support feeds back into the activity. It gets even better, which encourages. And you're trying for this virtuous spiral of creating compelling stories. But from a development point of view and talking to donors, you've actually got to be able to say, this is a great story. Let me tell you what it's doing. You have to be able to talk about the impact. You have to be able to say something about why will this make a difference and why will your investment in this make a difference. And we ran smack into this wall about we do lots of stuff. We don't really assess it very much. And so this is, it's important and everyone across the surveys, it's, this is important. We don't do it terribly well. Um, so, um, most, to date, most of, the, most of the assessment really means counting participants. There's more, there, there can be more to be said about this. And so societies would like to evaluate the impact of their programs in more coherent, rigorous, and longitudinal ways. And you will see that, in fact, um, one of the plenaries here is about assessment because this was identified so strongly as something of interest in knowing more about how to do it and doing better. Um, the, the majority of the societies note that they face some kind of barrier in their engineering education work. Um, most common barriers, um, curricula, um, <clears throat> sorry, 
communication challenges, um, challenges with changing curricula, um, both with the fact that they're changing, but also influencing the change of curricula. Um, incentives for change. Um, also issues related to time, resources, and funding. Um, a a sub-analysis revealed that the affinity societies are more apt to, to report facing barriers than the discipline-focused societies. Engineering education at the undergraduate level is not a top priority for all societies, but it does rank highly across many. Um, many societies would like to do more to address the undergraduate engineering education, um, according to breaking this down by size of society. Um, and to what extent do societies of various sizes rank undergraduate students as a high priority audience for their education efforts. Um, it is 50% of the small and medium-sized societies, 65% of the large societies, and 83% of the extra-large societies. Societies have some collaborations, but again, say that a lot of barriers exist, would like to collaborate more, and we think that this workshop is an opportunity squarely to say, okay, what does that look like? Society's efforts to disseminate their practices are generally limited, limited to their own membership via conferences, newsletters, um, meetings. Um, and that said, they're interested in sharing their practices beyond their own membership. And a majority of societies, 85% um, through the survey, consider themselves leaders in this field. Um, however, Half the societies rated their overall capacity to plan and implement education work as either low or some. So we're leaders in the field, but capacity to do very much um, below average compared to other things that happen in the context of societies. 38% um, reported that their capacity is high, 12% rated it as very high. And Finally, societies do report a range of gaps in engineering education that could be addressed by the field, including pre-college education, faculty preparation for teaching, design education, two-year preparation programs. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to ask Jen first. Jen, are there things you would like to add to that high-level overview? You know, I think you did a really terrific job there. I guess I would just want to um, emphasize a couple of things. One is the first point you made, which is that the breadth of goals, activities, and audiences that is covered here and represented in the sample, there's just a lot of knowledge and experience out there, which is, I think, a really exciting uh, foundation and place to start. Um, and then with respect to the, the partnering, uh, more than three quarters of our sample are already partnering with outside agencies, and um, close to 90% of those surveyed um, said that, uh, that at least to some extent they're partnering or collaborating with other societies. So there is, even though there's maybe not as much going on as we would like, there's certainly a lot of you know, capacity and, and desire to engage in partnerships out there and opportunities to learn how these partnerships and collaborations are established and, and, and sustained. Um, so um, I guess that's that's really that's really all I would add. I think uh, it, was a, it was a fascinating uh, uh, study, and uh, we're just very happy to be able to contribute a little bit to this great work that you're all doing. Okay, thank you. I'm going to pause here. Please, please stay on the line to ask. Sure. Um, not questions about how can we do this better because we're going to have lots of opportunities, but are there questions of, of clarification um, that you would like Jen to elaborate on? Yeah. Uh, uh, were honor societies included uh, in, the, in the survey? So, for example, probably the Pfizer Law. Oh, engineering I'm sorry. I, you know what? Jen probably can't hear you. I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting to remind you. If you have a question, there's some, there are microphones. Or you can, you're closer, you can come borrow this one. We have three microphones, a shareable one up here and one on either side. Okay, I was just wondering if uh, honor societies were, were included because, for example, Tabe de Pai is the largest engineering society in, in the world, I believe. Yes, 
And and it uh, it besides besides providing a, a goal for accomplishment by by students, it also tries to foster a spirit of liberal culture that's in their charge. Good. Yes, and uh, in fact, that uh, society was on the list, and they did complete the survey. Although I'm not sure about any others, and that um, the, the list of uh, societies was prepared on the on the NAE's and uh, and uh, or, yeah, and so I'm not positive about who was always on the invite list. I just know who returned the survey. Um, but yes, I, that one I, I will particular. And I will note that in some cases, um, in a discipline, the honor society is embedded in the professional society. So if several years ago now, Ada Kappa Nu um, merged with the IEEE, so it's IEEE Ada Kappa Nu, and so there, there are also some structures like that. But okay, good question. Other questions for clarification that would help you feel, okay, Mike, right behind you. I apologize if this was already noted, but how many uh, roughly how many professional societies are there that could have been considered as part of the of the study any is there an idea of the scope or the number that were actually approached as opposed to it, right. it, it, it is that the, the hundred i believe the hundred twenty one up there was a was a an attempt at a complete compendium is that yeah. right Jen that is correct and it's interesting because in the interviews we did thirty follow up interviews with about thirty societies and Several times I did hear this, well, you know, we're not really an engineering society or we have engineers as members, but it's not our top or only priority and that kind of thing. So it is a very interesting question of sort of who who is in this landscape and, and then again and then from that, what is what do they feel is their uh, connection to engineering education? But we took a very broad okay. spot there. Okay. Yeah. So, Elliot. Um, Jen, who tended to fill out, to, to complete the surveys within the societies? What what yes. role did the person have? Very good question. Uh, mostly executive directors and presidents. Um, and then after that, uh, CEOs, a few of those. And then um, in, in the summary, there's kind of a list of the types of Folks. So chair, there was a chair of board of directors, a staff officer, um, director of education, director of university programs, general manager, et cetera, et cetera. They're all they're um, listed, I think, in the summary. Uh, but uh, we did send, um, in some cases, more than one invitation out to uh, to one society and ask them to decide among themselves who would be the best person to fill out the survey. Uh, but we did target um, folks at the top in hopes that they would either fill it out themselves if they felt they had the background for it or send the invitation along to somebody in the society that would be better suited to complete the survey. I, I, I will also just note in the process of this, the, there actually was a pilot survey that went out to a smaller group. Um, very deliberately, partly with the intent of understanding, are we sending it to the right people and then to have a small group to work with to say, help figure out who should get this and how to get it into the hands of appropriate people? Yeah. I was wondering if there is a student voice uh, in this uh, survey. Um, do we have any input yeah. from the students in this? No, you know, we just, this was, that's, uh, uh, thank you for reminding me, I meant to say that at the outset, that this, uh, was really just looking at the society side of things to get a sense of what is out there, what pe folks are doing, but we do not have the education um, uh, perspective on the same types of questions. And I will also add um, that another thing I meant to say at the beginning, which is that this survey, as, as you can see, is um, looking beyond uh, undergraduate education. In other words, we really are looking at the, the spectrum um, of, of education in the survey. Okay. Question. Yeah. Hi, Amy Freeman, Penn State. Question: Did any of the societies that might have represented women or underrepresented populations were their responses similar to all other societies? Or um, I guess my real question: Were there any outliers? And if so, 
who were they and in what areas? Were there any that just didn't, you know, didn't mix with the trends of most of the others? You know, we did do a, a sub-analysis of the discipline focused societies and uh, affinity societies, and there were a couple of interesting, statistically significant um, differences. Uh, I will say that um, I wouldn't call them outliers, but I would say that, uh, for example, um, the uh, let's see here, Suck. I'm just looking to see in my the. Um, there was a difference that, like um, Leah pointed out, in terms of barriers that those who uh, the affinity societies are more uh, apt to face barriers and different kinds of barriers. They had different kinds of goals, um, but uh, I wouldn't say there was any anything um, any particular society that stood out as, with respect to to any of the the uh, trends that we were seeing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Abby Lamoka, National Science Foundation. Do you know, on average, what percentage of the operational budget of a society, engineering society, uh, comes from their membership contributions? And could this be a factor in determining the fact that they cater primarily to their members? Yeah, we didn't ask um, about those about budget that comes from members. We did, of course, ask about their approximate um, annual budget for education, uh, what the, what they um, uh, what they set aside for education, and um, um, a good th a third of the respondents weren't sure, didn't know, and and then the numbers kind of ranged anywhere from ten thousand to to a big a, a very large portion of the budget. So, but I don't know if that's a factor, and that that that's an interesting question. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna. Oh. Let me just note that the the uh, full analysis of the survey and the interviews are up on the project website. So if you want to see more detail, you can go there, and it has some of the breakdowns. Okay. Um, we're, we're getting ready to move to the next phase. So let let me just um, summarize. Um, Okay. Um, we talked about goals at the beginning. Let me frame this in terms of big questions that we're hoping to answer, um, to, to keep in mind. So how can societies play a more effective role in the education of undergraduates? Um, and when we talk about more effective role, I'm, I'm going to turn again to, to Elliot's emphasis on the goal being impact. And if you listen to some of the words, uh, revolutionizing engineering departments, the RED program. Um, so words like revolutionizing, transforming. Oops, I'm not close enough to the mic. Okay, got it. I'm just standing back and relaxing up here too much. Um, you know, that that we want to move ahead, and the, the 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 immediate step, certainly not the three week step, and probably not even the six month st step, is going to fall into that category of revolutionizing or transforming. But it will be planting the seeds and getting there. So with this focus on impact, more effective role in the education of undergraduates. Um, second, how can societies and academic institutions better understand each other? Because um, aligning is also one of the ways to um, increase impact. And very, on very practical sense, how can collaborations and partnerships take place? Because this is a group of, of an incredible range of people with commitment um, in this area. So how do we foster and how do those collaborations and partnerships take place? So quick outline for today. 